Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and wish you a happy little Friday morning. It's the day after Thursday, so my God, you made it all the way to Friday. This week is flying by. This month is already flying by. We're already halfway done with February. So as always, I want to be wishing you well, wishing the best of the best possible Fridays you could ever have in your good old cryptocurrency life. And I do want to say before I do forget that I am actually looking and I would like to offer up the opportunity for uh, for any sort of web developers who can put together a website for myself. Uh, I am looking for a specific person who knows how to do SEO and has at least a little bit of prior experience or something like that reach out to me on discord if you're interested and what i'll be offering is uh is 50 off any one of my any one of my programs that you desire just let me know and i'm happy to offer that up i'd like to work with someone who probably who hopefully like it was in a position that they couldn't necessarily get into the program uh as it is but with this sort of workaround you know we can offer up an opportunity so that would be the kind of person that i really want to bring on for something like this but please do reach out to me if that interests you and let's get into live scene right now as bitcoin you know doing absolutely nothing on friday 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 Friday, got to get down on Friday. Bitcoin doing none of the above. It's not going up, not going down. Pretty much going sideways. Nice little stable coin as uh, as JP Morgan actually just brought out, which is actually pretty huge news, by the way. Mr. Gr Brad Garlickhouse might be knocking on those doors pretty damn soon as well. So keep that one in mind. But overall, you know, Bitcoin actually uh, finding support along the uh, uh, along the daily 21 exponential, this, this uh, yellow moving average right here. So as long as you're above there, I mean, from a more traditional standpoint, it's not really pro to be to be bearish. Um, and the fact that we did actually use, uh, obviously find support around there is more of a good sign than not. And hello, uh, Scott, Scott and Pedro, Scott and Pedro. Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, and also you have the red 10 symbol moving average now crossing the upside of the yellow 20 minute expansion moving average. So yes, while my opinion is, is, you know, overall bearish, I don't believe that the lows are anything like that. Uh, this is a hard thing to trade against and I will probably be scaling out of my 36, uh, 20 short, uh, if we see any movement above 3,600, I do, I think that we might actually uh, we uh, we might come back and test uh, prior highs around this area, maybe even the daily 55 exponential, this green moving average, all the way around 3,700. So again, keep that one in mind. Now, of course, I always want to offer up everything, or uh, sorry, I'll offer up all perspectives because right now Bitcoin is essentially doing the exact same thing that it's been doing for the last, I mean, over a year, but really more importantly in the last uh, three months or so, Bitcoin is essentially filling out what I believe is a descending triangle, has the right volume characters as one, has the right shape, has the right size, has the right smell, has the right taste. All the external factors pretty much lining up. If you know, if, if all those lineups, probably going to be one, and uh, that is a that is a strong bearish pattern. Not only that, but as long as Bitcoin is closing dollars below this green 55 exponential, which does beautifully line up with this uh, descending trend line, uh, actually coming in a little a little bit under 3700. Um, that also lines up, lines up with some pretty uh, some pretty big other resistances from higher time frames. Uh, more most importantly, the monthly, which I'll bring up right now, uh, that monthly 55, which we actually broke for the first time in Bitcoin's history um, last month in January, is coming in right where right around 36.69, which is just a great number, and 90 cents. Hopefully, it's 69 cents. But yeah, you know, as long as Bitcoin's kind of using this area as resistance, to me, this is a breakage on January pop back retest, and so far, it's rejected. It is rejected now. Of course, this needs to be you know identified on a monthly total time frame. That means that I need to wait until you know actually February expires, and if we end below this green 55 exponential again at 36.69, then that would actually be a confirmed kill of this moving average, and I would actually start looking towards this next 89 down around uh, 2,500, 2,400 ish area in this zone, so to speak. So again, looking at these sorts of things and putting into confluence the higher time frames with the semi higher time frames. Yeah, you know, even if Bitcoin does pop back up to 3,700, I'll probably take another trade there. Like I said, above 3,600, I will de-risk. I'll be happy to get out of my current position, and I'll just re, I'll just redo the position down, or sorry, over around 3,700. Um, as as long as Bitcoin is within the context of this of this resistance trend line, my bias is bearish. My bias is to the downside, and I and I'm always happy to be selling resistance in a bear market. Uh, now, if Bitcoin does get above the green 55 exponential around 3,700, then it's very likely to be a quick shot to, in my opinion, probably 4,000. Now, yes, there is resistance along the way, 3,850 of importance, 3,900, you know, where, wherever this kind of block right here comes in around, yeah, about 3,850. Um, 
but uh, but but my opinion is that you'd probably see a, a, a relatively quick move to about four thousand. Um, but again, that would be out of the context of the current price action, and everything else says that this is a that this is your traditional uh, your, your traditional descending triangle. I mean, look at the volume characters down here. Even on Friday's green dildo party, you didn't you know? Yes, it was a bullish engulfing dildo, but nothing that was market shifting, market momentous, market changing uh, behavior as far as as far as the volume signature goes. It's what it, what what it looks like to me is that it's just more you know more the same essentially actually telling us that this is uh, you know all related to each other within the context of this consolidation. So to me, this is the right way to be reading it. Looking at the very low time frames, which yes, I actually do consider the daily like you know not necessarily the highest time frame of all time. I've considered like a medium time frame. Um, yeah, it, you know it, it does look like it wants to rally off this, and yes, we did hold up on the daily twenty one exponential. But uh, as long as you're below this guy right here, thirty seven hundred thirty six seventy five. As long as closing daily deals below there, um, probably going to be a sell to me. And you know, it's I, you know, I see a lot of people trying to trade like the 30 minute, the one hour, the two hour in a market like this, and understand that we are looking at literally three months of price action in a consolidation phase. And it's probably going to get resolved relatively soon. I mean, remember this when I say relatively, I mean like within the next two weeks to a month. But uh, this does have a an apex all the way around. What is this? Um, yeah, late March, actually, late March. So this will likely choose a direction relatively soon. Now, if you are representing, the, uh, representing this as a more of a pennant like this, the apex would be a lot sooner. It would be about, uh, you know, early March, uh, March 9th. March tends to be a little bit more exact. But I'll take the more conservative approach and say that it goes all the way out over here because we actually do see the same descending triangle forming on just about all the major cap alts right now. So I, we, will actually, we will actually go through that. But I do want to get this out as uh, as as long as Bitcoin's within the context of this. Yeah, I am looking for shorts. Yeah, I am happy to play a bearish uh, bearish pattern in a bearish market, especially when Bitcoin has a, has a history of playing out its descending triangles. I mean, everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone remembers uh, the six thousand area for you know pretty much about a year. So. With that in mind, um, we do have our daily stokes starting to turn around, and I do want to follow this up. This discussion from yesterday that uh, that I brought up, where essentially Bitcoin is has been creating a nice trend line on the stokes. Now I do have special settings on my stokes, um, and we have actually not only found resistance at this area, but also are hinting at a cross down. Or I mean, this is it's going to be very difficult to uncross this to the downside. Uh, Bitcoin is going to need about a about a hundred to hundred fifty dollar rally from here, basically break that thirty seven hundred resistance um, in the next day or two in order for this to you know snake around and take this uh, trend line out. If that doesn't happen, I mean you know this has actually been governing our highs ever since September. This was your September spike high when Bitcoin really started coiling around in this area as far as price action goes. And if we bring this back up once again, then we had this spike high right here. That was your December high, December twenty fifth high, which on price action was this spike right here and. Once again, we're getting into that zone. Not only that, but on the Stokes, and this is the daily Stokes, by the way, uh, we are just, you know, touching the edge of the bullish control zone. And right now it is, you know, it is it is losing momentum there and crossing down more importantly. So it, this would be considered a rejection of this if the next tick is, you know, really sloped to the downside, which... To me, I mean, if there's a lot of things lining up right now, you know, yeah, I did kind of, uh, I did open up this video by starting with all the bullish things, but realistically, I am bearish, and I do believe that Bitcoin, I strongly believe that Bitcoin will be headed for new lows. Um, the question is more of a matter of time, and you know, if Bitcoin does, obviously, if Bitcoin does break out this 70, uh, sorry, 3700 area here, this is going to get extended a lot more time, and I mean, you know, this this whole bear market is going to go on for probably uh, i mean if you want like if we could put it in terms of when bitcoins get gets above six thousand it'd probably take like well after this year um I'd imagine. So there's a few things to be aware of also on the 12 hour. 12 hour actually having about the same signature, but it, coil, it coils it up a little bit tighter. In fact, I would argue that it actually gets it even better because we have this trend line right here, which gets our highs from December, January, and now once again in this consolidation. So they're all related to each other as far as the volume characteristics goes, as far as the shape goes, and as far as the piece go, this is, you know, this is your December high right here. This is your January high right here. And once again, we're coming at a, uh, we're coming up to that resistance trend line. We have rejected from it and we're actually 
heading down on the 12 hour uh, and gaining momentum down as it, uh, you know as as we speak, getting kicked out of the bullish control zone right now. So yeah, I actually am looking for you know it does feel like if this is going to get all the all the highs before it probably gets this one as well. Now it did signal this I believe on this dildo here uh, two days ago on the 13th of February. So keep in mind you know a little bit of a uh, little bit of a laggard, but overall you know looking at this yes you do have all these supports coming in around this area no doubt about that. But as long as we're as long as we're beheld in by the 10 simple this red moving average yeah I mean it's that is your weakest moving average and it is still giving some resistance we have not been able to get above it ever since the rejection off the 89 here and closing closing down uh, again two days ago so yes there is a lot of there is a lot of support around this 35 30 35 50 area that we could call it you can see that there's plenty of wicks uh, stabbing down to this area even a little bit further down on yesterday's uh, 12 hour dildo but what I do want to say is that that also means that this is an area of significant importance because if Bitcoin does break it it's yeah you do have supports you know on the way down but you probably you know very, probably very likely have another swift move to the uh, to the bottom of this range and if we were to again draw this as more of a pennant than not which i am split if i i'm i'm not necessarily sold one way or the other if this is a pennant or not or if, if it's a pennant or descending triangle i'm more i'm more apt to go with descending triangles i i in my experience triangles work out better uh although pennants is like a fucking form of a triangle so it's just like crown do you even know geometry no i don't <laughs> I, I actually don't i don't even know what the fuck a rhomboid is or is is it a is it a rhombus <laughs> <laughs> just showing how fucking just digging myself into a deeper hole showing exactly how ignorant i am um but yeah you know there would be support at this area 34 85 and then this rising trend line if you are representing this representing this as a uh, as a pennant uh coming in around you know 3400 ish about even which we would have some horizontal support there as well so it would kind of make sense it's not like it's coming out of nowhere in fact i would represent it like this but officially speaking i would feel a lot more comfortable if bitcoin actually broke 3350 the lower support trend line of this guy and uh to to kind of like be looking for new lows you know essentially looking for continuation off of the rejection off the monthly 55 exponential leading probably down into the mid 2000s um so again uh we'll, we'll we'll dig into that one a little bit deeper of course yes you would have support right around here 3250 this former kind of low and you know i suppose i suppose your actual low so far right now 3150 but uh but overall you know if you probably just bounce there fails you know maybe comes back up test 33 3350 whatever the fuck and then rejects from there that's you know it's likely what's going to happen if you break 3350 i think that's the big area to be aware of and i would actually be taking positions on that and i'll be taking positions there you know i'll be taking positions a few different ways uh is, is how I'll be playing this right now. Like I said, I'm still holding on to the 30, uh, 3620 short that I have in my main account or 3619 if you want to get super specific. I don't have any position in my in my streamer account. Uh, it's not you know it's not really my priority when I do feel like there is a big a poten potentially big play on the table. Um, but uh, but for now, I'll hold that as long as we're below 3600. I will get out of it if it goes above 3600. If we do break 3530 before that then I'll just add to it. If we do go to the upside and move move about 3,600 and I close it, then I'll reopen somewhere, hopefully around 3,650 to 3,700, anywhere in that range. Um, so again, that's kind of how I'll be playing it. I probably shouldn't be, you know, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, just sharing exactly what I'm doing in these exact sort of same situations because I get a million fucking, <laughs> get a million messages like this a day. But understand, you know, I have different perspectives on the market perhaps than you. Um, you know, you know, every, everyone comes from different backgrounds, right? And that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, some people are like long long-term investors some people are like short-term some people are traders some people are consider themselves investors which <laughs> fair enough <laughs> you know fair enough I'll just leave it at that um, but yeah that's kind of what I see in the uh, in, in, in the uh, in those time frames in the very low time frames though they do want to rally um, to be fair the four hour wants to rally uh, four hour Stokes headed up and gaining momentum for the upside four hour uh, ooh, four, actually four hour jewel is coming into resistance right here but that's that's not a signal e uh, either which way what I do think is a little bit more important and what I forgot to talk about actually is the daily jewel the daily jewel is actually showing you something very interesting right now you can see that right around the 60 mark Mark, that has actually called and been the impetus for resistance for quite some time actually going all the way back to September now of course yes it has gotten above it you know a couple times before that um, and obviously if you go further back but we do know that anywhere around this area especially in a more aggressive bear market that is 
typically where tops have been found. I mean, this is again the top of your September rally. Uh, this was the this was before the no, the big the big break in November from six thousand to three thousand. This was your December high right here. This was your January high right here. We're once again within this zone, uh, maybe even one tick away from uh, uh, from some upside. But I do want to get that out as well. But yeah, you know, it, it's it's very um, it's it's very difficult right now because Bitcoin is getting so coiled tight into this area and volatility has just dropped off the face of the earth in fact let's go over and check out the historical volatility rank or the historical volatility index i should say and we are quite literally at multi-year lows right now uh, now the last time that we were actually at this level you probably remembered it was it was october november um uh, well, some of November, not all of November, of course, but mainly October, mainly uh, mainly beginning of November. And you probably remember that where it was pretty fucking boring. You know, a 5 to $10 move felt like an actual breakout or breakdown. People are going crazy over that, getting really wrapped up in the very low time frames, not understanding that we were essentially resolving a very similar situation. We, we were resolving a very long period of consolidation, and it was about ready to burst. Um, so again, we're once again right in this range, and that tells me that you know we're, we're unlikely to stay down here for too long, is what this tells us historically speaking. Uh, it is it is likely to break relatively soon, and with a bearish pattern and a bearish market, probably going to break to the downside. Um, you know whether we break down here or whether we have a rally up to four thousand, you know it, it's kind of irrelevant to me. Uh, the the next big play is likely a sell as I don't believe that the lows are in. Again, if you want the full on explanation on why the lows are not in, definitely check out the playlist titled long-term analysis as that will go into a much greater detail analysis with examples and, and, and all the reasons why. But I can briefly gloss over it right now on why I do not believe that the lows are in. And that is one, well, just as, as we saw, well, actually, no, we didn't, we didn't just see that, but volume on the low, not really consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays out lows. The reaction off the lows, not really consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays out its market cycle lows. The time spent at the lows, very inconsistent with the, with the way that Bitcoin plays out its lows. The return to the lows within a few percentages between this point in uh, mid-December and what we just played out in early February, uh, very, very uncharacteristic of the way that Bitcoin puts in major lows. Uh, you know, it usually doesn't, I mean, the last time that we actually put in a major low, it didn't return within 40% of that, like ever again. Um, so you can see that that is quite a big difference when this is literally about 4%, uh, 10 you know, 10 X less. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, the historical volatility rank, not really signaling a low. We can actually get to that pretty damn soon. In fact, I do want to bring that up right now. And then the MVT signal also not signaling a low, but let's go bring up the historical volatility rank or actually let's just use my invite only. Bali poor, where are you, my friend? Uh, I need to talk with you about this because I'd like to, uh, I'd, I'd like to get another read on this, but overall the, the, the daily on the historical volatility rank only reached up to a, like not 0.6, not 0.62, which is not very impressive. Uh, when we're talking about major, when we're when we're talking about major inflection points on the market, I want to see this thing flash like a one. And BitMexico is not the best exchange for this. We should be going to Bitstamp, as this will actually have uh, this will actually have enough information to really go off of. And you can see over here in Bitstamp, you know, when Bitcoin puts in major lows, major highs, it will be flashing an extremely high number. I mean, in some cases, even all the way up to a one, which is just it, that is insanity. It has been pretty much perfect on all on all bottoms and and uh, in all not not every major top it didn't get this major top actually funnily enough but every other one it actually did um, but as far as lows goes yes it has caught every major low in the history of bitcoin as well so i do i do really like this and obviously not giving us not giving us the same sort of read over here and in fact right now the vault the historical volatility rank is telling us basically what we know already but confirming it with a nice indicator and something that i do put a lot of weight on and that is that we are consolidating as you see that this thing has this nice orderly drop off um a, a nice trending drop off essentially Actually, it's maybe even easier if I kind of spread it out. But you can see that the moving average on it is just very obviously sloped to the downside. And uh, now it actually is losing its slope. You do see it kind of lose its slope for the first time in a very long time. But understand that uh, that's, I mean... Even with the actions of last Friday, this is this is Friday, February eighth. We just tested the we just tested the moving average on it. That is just again within the consolidation off of, or sorry, within within the uh, context of a consolidation for the last three months. That's all that that tells us. The big move likely still to come. Um, this thing does signal big moves when we typically get down uh, actually really low. So this could also be telling us that we're not due for a move like. I mean, another couple of weeks, which which actually kind of would make sense. Remember, there's there's an apex on this uh, descending triangle. You know what? Uh, mid mid March, I, th I believe it is. Yeah. So 
you typically get some pretty damn big moves when this thing gets around, you know, the, the well, we're kind of getting around there. If we put it on a 12 hour, it, it'll tell you, <laughs> you know, but does it tell you, right? Uh, that's, you know, mm, yeah, it, it can get really fucking low. You know, it can get really fucking low, but it is telling us that we're getting closer rather than we're not, um, which probably not too helpful. I mean, you pr probably most people can figure that out. <laughs> we're closer than we were before. Yeah, no shit, Crown. Uh, let's go put on the MVT signal. Always want to be checking in on this guy. And I'm curious what he's doing right now. Uh, MVT signal still making high, still making a higher high on the on the oscillator, not making a higher high on price action. So we do have divergence on this guy. We do have divergence. And while price action is within this range, and as long as we are below 4,000, and this does present a problem for the MVT. So not only are, are we nowhere near where it typically does call a major bottom, which is below the 50 mark. By the way, we're literally above four, uh, 100 right now, uh, I believe. Yeah, we are above 100. Nice. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, that's not what you want to hear if you're bullish. Uh, yeah, 102, 103. Um, but also, you know, when we're talking about this area, it there are a lot of similar similarities between this area in January um, that we're looking at on this price action and this area that all the fractalers, all the fractal practitioners are looking at over here. But I believe that we're probably a little bit more advanced than most people would would likely believe. And this would likely tell us the same sort of thing as what it did in 2014. When we actually zoom in and you look at this, this portion right here, everyone's looking for a higher high on a daily, on a weekly, something like that. And that's why people are saying that we're gonna go to, you know, 4,000 or 4,500, even if they're still, you know, overall bearish, which I don't believe is the right way to be looking at this. We have a very similar read on this guy. Yeah, the MVT signal did get significantly higher. It got all the way to 110. We're currently at 12, um, sorry, 102. But um, but as you got this divergence between these markers, that's when that's when price action actually did start to get wrangled back by this moving average. So that's what I'd have my eyes on is this orange moving average here. As soon as as soon as uh, the the signal gets back below that area, I would be looking for this. To, that's probably gonna be the next big signal that this is likely to head on further south. Um, so again, you know, is, is there a way forwards to 4,000? Yeah, absolutely. But again, I, you know, I need to, I need to be proven first. And how do I get proven? I, I need to see a daily little close above 3,700 or so, essentially just the green 25 exponential. But like I said, there, you know, there are some, there are some nice things in the lower time frames. Let's go check out the crypto fear and greed index right now. And uh, we have something very interesting on here as well. Again, this is actually ticking up or it's basically the same as yesterday, actually neutral 48. I mean, 48, as far as I'm concerned in a, in an overall bearish market in a market that's been downtrending for over a year is fucking greedy. I mean, if you're, if, if it's neutral and let's just actually look at the chart on this guy and you can see that the, it doesn't call it bottoms all that well. It, it tells you like, Hey, be on red alert that, you know, a bottom could be coming. Um, but it can stay down here for about a, a month before actually getting the rally, uh, which is what happened in November to December. Um, but it's really good at getting the tops and it gets those a lot a lot more consistently and a lot more um, a lot more precisely I should say is the right word and you can see that you know if you made like a regression line from the the February highs to you know this area here the May highs at 10,000 the uh, the November highs on that last rally it, you know sentiment actually got up to 50, to 50 sorry 56 we're at 48 right now um, just to remind you well you know that regression line would probably come in around where we are right now does that mean that we have another rally another spike up in this to come i mean yeah, maybe maybe yeah uh 40 i mean but it's again it's it's on it's on the radar is what i'm trying to say let's go look at longs and shorts as well it seems like the market agrees we have uh, uh, longs have added longs have fucking added in the last day so we've gained about uh, 700 700 longs um and shorts have let go of a little bit more positions, but pretty much, I'd say, relatively about the same. Uh, but again, this is, you know, the market agrees, essentially. The market is bullish. I know that people say, how can it go down when everyone's expecting down? It's like, well, the data suggests otherwise. What's probably happening is you're, is you're experiencing some sort of confirmation bias because you're stuck in your own echo chamber where, you know, communities can certainly become. And that's why I want to promote, you know, open discussion and people to disagree with what I'm saying, you know, if there's good reason, of course. But when we look at something like this, it's very abundantly clear that the market is quite literally in great favor of long versus short, 60 versus 40 percent. That is... That is overwhelming, in my opinion. Not only that, but longs are actually paying a little bit on their uh, on on their daily interest. I mean, this is not high, but shorts have just they. It's been free to short for like 
the last <laughs> it's been free to short for like the last fucking uh three four weeks almost a month now i'd, I'd imagine i've never seen it like this I, I i can't recall a single time uh also very important is you'll notice <laughs> you'll notice that the last few times that bitcoin's had some pretty big dumps you had imbalances like this you had you had imbalances like this and when and when it was the opposite you had when it when it was the opposite where you had shorts at like 30 you know above thirty thousand uh longs and low lower twenty thousands you had some pretty nasty pumps I mean, <laughs> some pretty girthy pumps. So again, looking at these sorts of things does help us, you know, kind of cut through some of the bullshit of uh, of, of those echo chambers. Now, to put it to to put the uh, to put the point even a little bit more bluntly, three and a quarter of these shorts are actually hedged. So we really have about a little under nineteen thousand open naked shorts versus again thirty almost thirty four thousand open longs, which historically or sorry in and in real time it is above 34,000 open longs and this is not good i mean every time uh, this trend line right here represents kind of where i've noticed that the it's like too many pe too many people on the bus mentality too many people on the bus syndrome where too many people are along and you know big dumps typically occur now it does not tell you when it when it the actual actionable time when this actually comes, if that's not redundant enough, um, is when it comes back down below this 33,000 area. Because you can see that in the past, it's like it's stayed above there for like weeks in some cases, getting all the way to 40,000. But it is on the radar again, just like the fear and greed index, just like the you know consolidation that we're essentially playing out as well. And as everyone, you know, and from what I notice, I actually notice that a lot of people on YouTube are calling. Three top three reasons why bull market is over. Top three reasons why the bottom is in. Top three reasons why Elliott Wave says wave five, 20 billion. It's like, all right. Tell me more about your fucking silvers as well, please. Um, so yeah, you know, when it comes to these sorts of things, this is I think it's a little bit delusional right now. Again, um, I want to be bullish uh, just as, as much as the next person. Like I said, Moon Boobs is coming at 20,000, and I absolutely love titties. We just gained another 100 um, longs, by the way. Uh, I absolutely, I, I love titties. Literally, if, it, if there's a war between tits and ass, I am 100% on the side of tits. I don't give a fuck about asses. You know, it's, it's like whatever. Titties, amazing. And, I'll, and I will be buying my girlfriend massive, humongous, size G titties. At 20,000 bitcoins so you can trust in that fact but at the same point in time you got to call a spade a spade and uh, this is just another thing in fact I would even add this to the list of of shit that I'm looking for to be indicative of a bear market being over as another failure for Bitcoin to, to meet it so it's like zero for seven zero for eight or something like that we want to see these these metrics essentially opposite I want to see shorts at around 30,000 longs at around 20,000 I want to see that imbalance in favor of the uh, in, in favor of the shorts not the longs um, with the with the shorts also paying a rate as well that way you actually have people to squeeze that way you actually have overhead liquidity that's what and you know when those people do get squeezed they just add rocket fuel to the upside uh, in fact we have quite literally the opposite Bitcoin is literally at at historical uh, historically speaking very high we just added another hundred longs by the way um, and as price has price even moved no it's literally not even moved so let me just kind of explain why this is important price is essentially stagnant and perhaps you could even argue that it's sloping downwards in fact I would argue that that it, it's been drooping over the last uh, week quite literally a week now we have been adding longs ever since. We've added about, uh, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 longs. And we've lost, more importantly, we've lost about 6,000 shorts all the way from last week. We had about 28,000 shorts. We are at 22,000 open shorts. And again, you know, some of those are hedged. So this is not a good setup. This is a really, really bad setup, actually. Not only that, but again, anytime that shorts do get down around this low 20,000 area, and especially below 20,000 area, uh, those that, historically speaking, is is quite literally the opposite, you know, it matches up with some major, major, major bump, uh, uh, dumps, just like when shorts get super high over here, over here, over here, over here, that matches up with some pretty massive pumps. I mean, in fact, when Bitcoin put in its current lows at the, um, at the 3,100 range shorts shot up just a week before that, all the way to 42,000. I don't think I've ever seen it higher before. And then what happens after that? Well, pump. And it's like, all right, no fun, <laughs> no shit. You're also coming off of, you know, major sports and all that kind of good, uh, good shit. And, um, and you know, now we have the ebb and flow of the market, but you know, you just kind of put it in perspective. This was your March dump over here of 10,000 to 6,000. This was your May dump over here, 10,000 to 6,000. Sorry. March dump was, 
Was March dump 10,000, 6,000? No, that was 12,000, 6,000. The May dump was 10,000, 6,000. The, uh, the August dump was 8,000 or... Was that 8,000, 6,000? This was 10,000, 6,000. Yeah, then May. Uh, September dump was like 74 to, to 6,000. Then we had November dump from 6,000 to 3,000. And we're once again getting close to this range. We're actually still a little bit above it. Um, so it certainly could come down a little bit more and that would come at the expense of liquidating some more shorts. And now, you know, that, that would probably, you know, get, uh, getting a Bitcoin move back to about 3,700 and testing that area would probably do the job. It'd probably do the trick. You know, if, if, if we want to test resistances one more time, and reject for them one more time, you know, to really confirm the monthly uh, 55 uh, as, as a big area to be aware of um, that, you know, that would probably probably get it right in this area. And in fact, I will I would love to put in a nice uh, let's put it in right here. Yeah, let's put it in right here. I don't know why my charts didn't shave from yesterday because uh, I wanted I really wanted to have this in. But yeah, anywhere anywhere like literally below 20,000, historically speaking, is where it gets nasty. Yeah, you do have a few dumps initiated from higher, but um, but fair enough. Let's go check out GBDC. GBDC doing the same thing. Uh, GBDC actually making new lows yesterday, uh, breaking down this pattern, and we have the same thing, right? We have a descending triangle. We have a descending triangle with an apex of when? Basically mid to late March, and we have tested the upside of it, not necessarily getting all the way to the green 55 exponential, but, you know, test one, test two, reject new lows, losing the 21 exponential. I, this has been leading spot prices for, you know, over a year over a fucking year. And I would probably be looking for this to continue the trend as a trend is your friend until the end of the trend. Not only did we lose the 21 exponential, but we have both opened and closed, I believe below it. Yeah, that is, yes, that, that is confirmed. And I believe that we also close, yeah, we did close below the 10 simple as well. So that's confirmed kill of that moving average. This just looks like another, you know, another spike high within the overall context of this. Again, look at the volume characters. It tells us that this is just all consolidation related to each other. Um, we do have, what do we have? Uh, we have a little bit of hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point in the overall context of a downtrend, also making higher high. I believe that 12 hour Stokes not really telling us anything. Yeah, they're not, it's not literally not telling us anything differently. Um, let's go to a four hour, uh, four hour Stokes just crossing down. Um, so fair enough, you know, not, uh, not, not really anything else to say about that. Um, so yeah, lower time frame oscillator is switching down around. Higher time frame oscillators haven't really got there just yet. Uh, do we have anything? We have, what about the jewel? Is the jewel telling us anything right now? Um, not so much. Not so much. I'm looking for trend lines. It, the jewel actually could could very easily get a little bit higher. Again, it did come off. I mean, it called the bottom perfectly, but in a bear market, how much can you really expect off that? The, sorry, the bottom so far, I should say. Um, and same thing on Bitcoin, right? Same thing on Bitcoin. It, it tells, you know, it tells you, it tells you to buy literally right here on February 7th. You get a nice move. And typically speaking, I would look for a bigger move, but it's the bearish indications and a bearish market that I like to take. Anyways, let's start to get on to the other, the other also this market. Um, and kind of show the, the similarities between these things. Uh, first we'll start off with, First, let's start off with um, XRP. Uh, Brad Garlic House looking like he might be knocking on some doors pretty damn soon. Uh, we are once again at the top of this uh, descending triangle resistance. We do have our daily stokes crossing down, rejecting getting out of the bearish control zone, by the way. And we also do have uh, daily RSI just also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone. Uh, we are technically above the exponential right now, so fair enough. Um, but below all major, or sorry, below, yeah, below all major moving averages actually. And uh, this one does, you know, it, it doesn't look too healthy. Let's let's go to a lower time frame and see what he's saying. Um, hmm. Yeah, lower time frame right here. You could actually make the argument that this is coiling up right now. You have a very obvious support right here, right here at about uh, 30 cents even or so. Um, but again, you know, if if we actually do break this area up, I mean, we can get we can get a nice wick up just like we got a couple days ago. It needs to close above this area, and then actually, then actually, Ripple can run. Um, let's go look at uh, Mr. Stellar. Stellar actually is interesting because Stellar is Stellar. If I had to pick a bullish alt right now, or something that's kind of likely to to carry on a little bit more of an uptrend, uh, I'd actually pick Stellar. Stellar's gotten beat up a lot over the last uh, three months, just basically straight down. I mean, this is it's pretty much. It, it almost looks like it's it's advanced pr uh, further than what the other um, basically everything else in the market has done. But uh, but basically, I mean, Bitcoin looks like it's in this formation right here. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same stellar broke it down making new lows and i think that it's actually put in um I, I i think it's put in at the very least a local low right now and i think it's at the very least going to at least test about eight 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 and a third eight and a quarter cents if it gets above that area then 
actually probably a quick shot up back up to about nine and a half uh, area. So, you know, stellar, stellar actually looking a little bit interesting. We got our daily Stokes as opposed to the other things, you know, pointed up. We got our daily RSI rallying off the, uh, rallying off the test of the exponential over here. Yeah, it is, you know, an overall bear setup, but I think that at the very least is probably due for a relief rally. Let's go check out Monero. Monero, same sort of thing. You know, what do we see here? We see a nice ascending triangle and you see, a, you actually see a pretty obvious rejection right over here. Monero looking a little bit weaker than spot Bitcoin as, uh, as, as it does struggle to hold the 10 simple yes it's technically above it right now but uh with this high volume dildo uh this this high volume girthy dildo uh red dildo yesterday on valentine's day uh it does look to me like it wants to carry on a little bit further down we got our daily stokes having a fresh cross down we got our daily rsi you know struggling to maintain this area giving us some hidden bearish divergence as well between this point and this point i mean shit even all the way back to this point you got three drives essentially um and this one does look to me like it wants to come lower let's go look at like an eight hour yeah eight hour eight hour looks a little bit weak as well wants to come down uh jewel did give a sell right here um i think that has probably got a little bit more on it but uh, was all, all, already so far a pretty damn good trade yeah, about seven percent on that in the span of a uh, couple days looks like uh, let's go check out um let's go check out mrs litecoin the leader of the market the one that led it to the upside what is she doing now she actually looks okay she actually looks okay. And uh, people are going to be telling you that this is a falling wedge right now. We're actually breaking out to the upside. And you know what? Fair enough. Um, it kind of it, it kind of is. The volume characteristics do work for this. And we do have our four-hour Stokes pointed up. They look they look fine. Uh, four-hour Jewel is... Four-hour Jewel is interesting. Um, it's not really telling us too much, actually. But yeah, th this one actually does look like it wants to kind of pump back up. And this is what makes me think that it's very easy for Bitcoin to have another rally back up to the 3,700 mark. But I'd imagine that it probably gets rejected. And Litecoin probably going to find resistance somewhere around the $44 mark, I'd imagine. So we did get we did get our, our straight down all the way to, I mean, oh, just about per actually perfectly yesterday. Again, the, the technical analysis is not always as good. Um, but uh, 39, I, I think I called 39.50 spike low. Uh, it, it bottomed out 39.60. Fair enough, you know, good enough is good enough. Probably gonna probably gonna put in a rally somewhere right around this range. And I'd imagine that it probably gets rejected. Uh, if it does take out that that area, then then yeah, 45. Basically, basically get get another run at your prior highs. Um, but again, remember higher time frames. As long as this guy is below 47 and a half dollars and more conservatively 50 dollars, uh, very difficult to call that anything really significant has changed. And what are we essentially making right now? is some sort of a massive rising wedge. So I would be careful, but it does look the best out of all the majors. I should say that. Uh, Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here. How's he doing? Um, basically looking the same as Bitcoin. Uh... In a way, actually, in, in perhaps perhaps not fully, but basically we got this support right over here. That is your major area to be aware of. And then we got this ascending trend line here. And if we actually pull this all the way back, you can see that this does have relevancy going all the way back to the bull trap in May at uh, 800 bucks. Uh, connecting with this, 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 this. Uh, major dumps have ensued every time that it's actually touched it. And we're actually touching it right now. In fact, we are, we are actually quite literally above it right now on a daily. But is it going to be just another wick? Um, again, looking a little bit stronger than Bitcoin actually as well, uh, hanging out well above the 21 exponential and the red 10 simple moon average. So again, lower time frames, uh, lower time frames looking actually four, four hour looks really good right here. Actually, um, four hour golden cross and four hour Stokes crossing the upside. I, I this one wants to rally. This one wants to rally four hour jewel is in, in a way kind of on support, but it is kind of a, it is also in a bearish posturing, but you know, overall, this if this one gets another leg up uh, 136 and a half is is certainly is is certainly not out of the question i i think probably even higher than that uh, you might even see all the way to uh to this area for 145 and a half um four hour dildo golden crosses have been pretty damn powerful the last time that we got one was over here where it's it essentially rallied all the way from uh this 125 mark to 160. so uh, a strong history of it actually playing out um I don't really see it on anything else, but yeah, it, it is. It is also being held by the three seven seven, as you can see, one twenty six and a, and a quarter. But hey, uh, a lot more positive things and negative on this guy. You are the major resistance, though. So fair enough. You know, it's uh, I'd be waiting for confirmation, but the second that you start closing four hour dildos, especially above you know one twenty six and a half, uh, I would not want to be short. And this is probably going to have implications with the rest of the market now, isn't it? Because everything 
everything pretty much moves together. So both Mr. Buterol and Mrs. Litecoin actually look like they do want to rally here. Um, other alts, not so much, not, not, not so much. Uh, let's go check out, what else do we want to check out? Yeah, I actually added a shit ton of, um, uh, of other shit coins, like top market cap shit coins. So we can check, uh, we can take out, we can, we can check out them. Let's just go, uh, quickly go through them. This is EOS right here. EOS is getting rejected at its former high. That's what it looks like so far. Um, don't know why people are so excited about this. As long as you're below three, three, three bucks and five cents, really like really fucking God awful. Uh, Daily Stokes turning around as well. By the way, sorry, I should actually say for Mr. Buterall, Daily Stokes are turning around as well, but not a strong turnaround, and that can actually be undone. If it does get, get if it gets a leg up today, it will be undone, and we and, and this this will get some continuation. Uh, in 130, 136 and a half would be right around the corner. I mean, even I mean, shit, could it hit 145 and a half today? Mm. I'm less, uh, I'm less convinced of that. Uh, Bit, uh, Bcash over here, Bcash doing the same thing. You know, it's sunny triangle. We got our daily soaks turning right at the top, actually getting rejected from the bullish control zone. And we actually have lost the daily 21 and the, and the red 10 simple. So below all major moving averages, this one wants to come back down. It wants to come back down. So again, uh, looking at Neo, Neo saying, I mean, this, yeah, this is, this is just fucking garbage. Uh, there's no, there's no say about this. It's, <laughs> there's it's a chinese ethereum baby you know what that means uh zcash same thing man same fucking thing you know it's, I, I could say the same thing about this as neo right uh although daily stokes eh, not quite there just yet not as advanced as the other ones but um you know rejection right here again uh, again alongside this uh, resistance so you know more the same most likely yeah so i think that that covers it up for the alts i think uh let's go back to bitcoin i do want to check out and just show the confluences between the fibs i mean the fibs really getting it well right now uh, we do have you know just bringing it from our low to that high something like that we're resting on the points we're, we're resting on the 618 essentially as long as bitcoin's above there it's you know it's, it's not the best idea to be bearish uh, in the more immediate time frames obviously when looking at the picture at large yeah it's uh, be i'd be very diff, it'd be very difficult to say that this is bullish i don't understand that um you know as long as bitcoin is below 4100 and closing in opening and closing weekly deals below there i i don't really see any reason to be like bullish thinking that the lows are in Does, but that also means you can get a rally all the way up there right um and still really not change anything uh, significant um 0. 0.5 basically basically kind of monitoring our resistance right around 3650 if i used uh wix it's probably gonna actually it actually might get it better on wix yeah, yeah, 0. 0.5 mark, uh, matching up with the with the green 55, 382 coming in around 30, 3850. So I actually do like that. You know, you probably will have resistance there. But again, my 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 personal opinion is that if you take out 3700, it's 4000 is right around the corner. I, I don't think I think you might sell off there on the first pass at 3850, but it's probably probably gonna be a nice shot, a nice uh, nice girthy dildo, nice girthy green dildo actually all the way up there. Um, and then by the same token to the downside, we got the 786 essentially governing our lower support at 3350. You know, yeah, you do have the 886 coming down around your prior lows, but I think the 786, if as as soon as the bears take out that level, uh, this is um, it's ready to go, baby. It is ready to burst. Alrighty, let's go check out. I think I've spoken about pretty much everything I want to speak about. Let's go actually just do, let's look at the higher time frames very briefly. This is the weekly. Um, again, this is what I was, what, what I was referring to, you know, with the assumptions that the lows are not in, I will, you know, I'll be holding on to those as long as, as, as long as I'm not proven otherwise. And what would, what would be my criteria for being proven otherwise? Well, opening and closing and weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential would, 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 would likely do it. Um, and that's around 41. 41. So again, you know, that, that does mean Bitcoin could rally all the way up here, reject from it. And it's like, all right, well, we're still, still bearish. Um, it's not until we both open and close above that. And of course, I, uh, just a quick reminder that the green 55 on the monthly is currently where we have found resistance at. So, you know, it would be a little bit uncharacteristic to me if, you know, if, if Bitcoin does on a monthly dildo time frame take out the high, the wick high of the prior dildo month, as you can see that they've been declining, every, you know, for the last quite literally uh, what is this six more like eight, seven or eight months? Um, if it did take, take out the high of this guy, then yeah, it would, you know, would, would be, would be very interesting, but that's, again, that's all the way at 4,100, basically the same, basically the same sort of thing as the, uh, as a weekly 200 exponential. So I, I'm not really leaning towards it happening. Um, but Hey, if, if it does break 3,700, that's kind of where I'd be looking towards, uh, things would, things would get a lot more interesting around that area. But again, you know, as it stands, as long as Bitcoin is below 3,700 and if, and especially if it closes this monthly diddle below 3,700, that's, 
it's gonna look really fucking bad, man. You got the red 10 simple and the yellow 20 minutes bench getting so fucking close, man. So close. That would just and I would consider this as, as as a consolidation, essentially testing this. And then once I cross over, you're probably gonna get the uh, the nice move. So again, just kind of I, I am I'm projecting things in the future. That's not, that's really not good technical analysis. That, that is more opinion, which again I do not trade in my opinion. But hey, just keep just just understand the importance of this 3700 number. As long as we're below there, it's very 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 difficult to in my opinion take any longs I, I i don't even i don't i don't think it's really worth it right now even with the um even with some of the bullish posturings on the lower time frames which again there are actually plenty uh medium time frames are all switching to the upside right now uh media uh you know again four hour stokes up eight hour stokes up just fresh cross by the way 10 hour stokes losing momentum wants to cross up um so yeah, you know, uh, o overall I am bearish, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't get a run back up to test 3,700. Just gonna be another sell. So I've kind of explained how I'll be managing my positions. Hope that does make sense. Hope this one finds you well. And again, it was very, um, it, it was very enlightening to hear the response to the new, uh, the new psychological series that I put up yesterday. I was actually kind of hesitant to do it because I didn't think that too many people would be interested in it. But um, it seems like it was actually pretty well, well received. So I do have a shit ton more videos to upload with that. But I'm always I'm always looking for more suggestions um, as far as content goes, and uh, and that happens to be perhaps the subject that I'm most passionate about because trading really does trading really teaches you a lot about yourself. Um, you know, it's 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 nece it's necessary to learn a few truths about yourself, about life, in order to really come in and be a consistently successful in this game, and uh, and that's what I hope to share throughout that series. Of course, if you're not, you know, if you're not really interested in that sort of thing, which I actually received some feedback that it's like, what are you doing, man? You're lecturing on this. People only care about technical analysis. It's like, all right, okay. Enjoy your, enjoy your free content. <laughs> it's like, it almost feels weird, man. It's like, I don't even want that person to watch. Um, but yeah, fair enough, man. Fair enough. Uh, you know, overall, I'm always looking for new content. So, so you know, be, feel free to to offer up any suggestions. Uh, if not, you know, like like I said, I have plenty of uh, I have plenty of videos lined up for that series, which I'll be releasing. I should say every every Saturday from now on. So yeah, that's gonna do it for now, guys. Again, keep in mind the higher time frames. Keep in mind the critical levels. Nothing's changed in the last week. Literally a week quite literally one week so it's all it's all sounding like a broken record right now actually let's, let's quickly look at uh, spies let's quickly look at traditional markets because actually something did happen uh, very interesting yesterday right we were looking at the daily and we said and i said as soon as you break the low of the daily which was uh, of the prior the prior daily which is 274 and 56 cents it's actually a good a good short and look at that a uh, nice little down on the day did close the day uh did close the day a little bit down but you know basically unched uh filling the gap um but uh, support right here, 272. As long as that's holding, which I we are actually seeing the first initial cracks in this. Uh, four hour is signaling some bearish divergence here. That's typically worth a trade for me. Uh, perhaps even putting in a cock and balls as well, although not necessarily fully formed. Uh, you can, see, can also see the etchings of a four hour dildo golden cross in the making. So I'd imagine that if bears do want to take over, if they do want to, you know, actually attack, which they, they've been pretty lackluster the whole the whole last uh, couple months, um, it, it would happen relatively soon to avert that crisis as you're going to be battling a lot of bots and algos if that does indeed happen. So again, you know, I, I, I'd be waiting for confirmation, full on confirmation of reversal. I, I don't really think it's appropriate to be like super bearish on this guy until you break really 262-ish area. Uh, by the same token today, you know, if the weekly closes up here, I think I've there's no real reason to be bearish on this if the weekly closes up here if the if the, if the weekly does close lower and we avert this this uh this moving average cross that you're seeing that uh, that I'm pointing to well then we got something to talk about but for now for now it looks like continuation we'll have to reassess by end of day it's going to completely it's going to completely depend on where we close the weekly today so again for now it's probably not too not too helpful to be talking about it anyways that's going to do it for to get for, uh, again again for today i'll be back on probably later uh today hopefully with some new price action that would be amazing i'm sure that it would probably be w very well received uh by most people myself included because right now it's been pretty fucking boring so again guys hope you have a great rest of your friday if i don't speak with you um wishing you well for the for the upcoming weekend wishing you well as as always and I'll t and I'll see you soon take care